Sounds delightful. Well, welcome to Yin Bliss. Oh, tell you, there's no better time than yoga than the present for yoga. And this present is particularly in need of yoga. So I'm very happy to be here doing this practice with you. We're going to start out in Supta Baddha Konasana. So if you uh, have a bolster, great. Um, grab a couple of towels or blankets. And then some kind of strap is pretty nice too. And um, I will, I'm going to be using my bolster, but I'll also give directions for using all towels or blankets. So you'll place your bolster lengthwise up your mat. And if you don't have a bolster, then you can just take your towels and fold them into a bolster shape. I find the best thing for that is to take your towel, fold it in half so it's, you know, more like a little square rectangle. And then depending on the size, you can do thirds or quarters here. And uh, before, we were trying this with using five towels, and I can tell you it was pretty unsatisfying. I was very happy to return to using my bolster. So hopefully you have one. If you don't, well, now you know you need one. <laughs> We're gonna take one of our towels or blankets and make a little pillow up top for our head. And then we're going to take our next two towels or blankets and roll them up to make pads for under our knees and sometimes under the forearms too, depending on how the pose feels when you're in it. Now this is restorative, so the poses are long. So if something gets uncomfortable, make sure that you make an adjustment to feel comfortable again. Um, there's no point in enduring an uncomfortable pose or position. Um, there's no need to do that. So we, we like to crank compassion up to the maximum for this. So you're gonna set your booty right against the bottom of your bolster but on your mat, just it's like right up against there. Bring the soles of your feet together and open your knees out to the side butterfly style. Then take your little towel rolls and scooch them in as close to your hips as you need to for it to feel comfortable. Now this hip opening as the knees open out to the sides can feel pretty good, but if at any time it gets uncomfortable, you can just straighten your legs out or you can place your feet on the mat and let your knees lean in towards each other. So let me lay back, Whew. opening the arms out to the sides, palms up. <laughs> this happened last week too, it's like the belly show. Sorry about that. <laughs> so let's just check in first with our chest. The collarbones are smiling to the side. Are your elbows touching the ground? If your elbows are touching, it'll probably remain comfortable. If your elbows are not touching, depending on how big your bolster is, you may want to use the rolled up towels or blankets that we've used to rest your forearms on. And feel free to try it both ways. Then tune into your hips. Do you have enough support here? Hell yeah, I might want to double my little rolls here. Move them out to the sides. That feels much better. If you need more support, you move the bowl, the rolls up towards your hips or double them. <laughs> if you want less support, move them out towards your knees. Should feel really nice. Now let's take a big breath in. You let it go. Another one just like that. Expanding your belly and your ribs. And then let it go. Relaxing your whole body as you melt. We'll do one more just like that. Expanding, filling all the way up. And then let it go.
We're not going to do a progress. <laughs> We're not going to do a practice known as Yoga Nidra. Now this is where we consciously relax different parts of the body. What I like to do is I'll say a body part, and as you inhale, you'll locate that body part. And then on your exhale, you'll consciously relax and release that part. Now I found that sometimes it's a little hard to connect to my body. That even I could be holding a little bit of muscle tension and not be able to so you can feel it. Um, so as you're locating your body part, it helps to press that body part into the mat, to lift it gently, wiggle the fingers, or do a little circle with the wrists, or even just gently lay your hand on whatever part it is that you're trying to connect with. So whatever of these works best for you, feel free to try it. And then you might notice that some parts are a little stubborn, you know, and you'll consciously relax them and they'll just creep right back into tension and then you need to give them a few, uh, a few reminders. So take note of the parts of you that are doing that, you know, because it's going to be, usually that'll be where you tend to hold your stress. And uh, those little uh, usual suspects, they'll, they'll poke up here and there. So if I'm feeling particularly stressed, I may need to go back and relax the part a few different times before I fully surrender. So just notice and get to know yourself as you do the exercise. We'll start with our forehead. Inhale, maybe raise your eyebrows to feel your forehead. Good. Exhale. Oh, relaxing the forehead, melting it. You can touch or do a little self massage here. That feels good. Mm. Moving down to the jaw. Inhale, maybe yawn the jaw, open for a nice stretch. Good. Exhale. Relaxing the jaw, relaxing the tongue, relaxing the soft palate. Moving to the neck. Inhale, maybe rock your head from side to side. And exhale. Ah, let the weight of your head melt completely into your pillow. Moving to the shoulders. I like to do a little circle back or two as I inhale. And then exhale, ah, releasing the shoulders, the trapezius muscles. And bringing the mind into the shoulder joints themselves, the ball and socket, the rotator cuff. Inhale, maybe arch your back. And exhale, relaxing all those little muscles in your shoulder joint itself. Then moving down into the upper arm, your biceps and tricep. Inhale, maybe gently flexing those muscles, feeling them. And then exhale, let them soften and melt. Moving down into the elbows, inhale, maybe gently lift the hands to feel the elbow joint. And then exhale. Feel the peace melting its way down your arms. Moving to the forearm. Inhale, maybe arching your hands back. You're bringing your fingertips together. And then relax. Letting your hands find their native place of relaxation. Moving into the wrists. You may like a little figure eight here as you inhale. And then exhale. Put them to sleep. Let them go down. Moving into the hands, 
Inhale, stretching the fingertips out. And then exhale, letting them curl up into their way of being. Notice your arms all relaxed, your hands. The travel of your mind back up through the forearm, the elbow, the upper arm, the shoulder, leaving complete relaxation in your wake. Coming through the shoulders and into the main trunk of the body, finding the heart. Behind the sternum, the ribs are working, the heart itself, the cardiovascular system, giving us energy and consciousness, oxygen for our brain to run on, and also the center of our emotional being. Even as how we're all so separated from each other right now, how painful that is, and, and how, what a strange time it is. You know, we're all grieving the way things were. We may be grieving friends or family or acquaintances that are feeling worse with the pandemic. So let's put our hand on our heart and take a moment and feel safe. Let's take a moment and feel whole. And then bring into your heart the memory of those that you love, those that you wish you could see and embrace, members of your family, members of your circle of friends, acquaintances that you maybe see at the studio or work. And then hold in your heart just your community members and people that you don't know but form the fabric of life around you. And let's send out a little love to all those people as if our hearts were a beacon that could send the light of love all passing through space and time and finding the hearts of those we love. I see it like a star. The heart just exploding in every direction that somebody I love is in. And then feel your love land. Feel it received and recognized by those you love. Then feel it returned. Feel that little return current of love. We are all connected. Love bridges the gap that holds us apart right now. And it is a challenge for sure, but it gives us the opportunity to recognize the strength of our love and the power of our heart. Go ahead and release your hands to the side. Let's take a big breath into your magnificent heart. And exhale. Letting go of all the armoring and all the mourning. And just feeling the radiance of that love. And down we travel deeper into our core, finding the solar plexus, the bottom of the ribs, the home to our liver, our gallbladder, parts of our kidneys back there, and also the solar plexus chakra, the center of our self, our identity. It's the heart is what connects us to everything. The solar plexus is what sets us apart, what makes us unique. And so breathe into the solar plexus, into the soul of you. And exhale, ah, releasing any armoring, any tension, any confusion, and just letting the light of your life shine. And down we go into the belly, where your digestion happens, the transmutation of food into pure life energy. Not only the digestion of our food, but also the digestion of our experiences. 
where we transmute food into energy and experiences into wisdom and discernment. Inhale, breathing into your belly. And exhale, ah, let it soften, let it melt. And down we go to the bottom of our trunk, the bottom of the belly, right above the pelvis, where our second chakra sits. This is the home to our creativity, to our desire to create beauty, to create life. This can be physical fertility, but also all of our creative fertility, all of our interesting ideas, all of our creative projects. A part of you that looks upon your life experiences and wants to reimagine them for other people. Wants to show what you've learned. Breathe into the lower belly. And exhale, ah, releasing the womb, the bladder, the lower belly, the lower back. And down we go into the pelvis, the hips, the root of us, our connection to the planet. Breathe in here, maybe pressing your, pressing your booty into your mat a little bit, arching. And then exhale, oh, feel everything grow heavy, the pelvis grows heavy, and relax. And down we go into the upper legs. Breathe in here, maybe bob your knees or squeeze your buttocks a little bit to feel those muscles. And then exhale, ah, let them relax. Let them let go. And down we go into the knees. And exhale, ah, let them go. Traveling down into the lower leg, the shin, and the calf. Inhale here, maybe flexing your feet to feel those muscles. And exhale, ah, letting them surrender. And down the calf we go, traveling to the ankle. Inhale, feeling your ankle. And exhale. Ah, blessing of peace into the ankle. And down we go into the feet, the balls of the feet, the heel, the soul of you. Another connection point with the earth. Breathe in, maybe flexing your toes. And exhale. Ah, let them melt. Now, if you had any areas that were a little resistant or relaxing, maybe revisit them now. Just reaffirming the shoulder girdle is relaxed. The hips, relaxed. Lower back, everything is melted. And just notice what it feels like to be fully and consciously relaxed. Maybe you feel very heavy in the mat. Or maybe it feels like floating. It starts out like heaviness for me and then gradually I float away. See if you can notice any of the subtler body sensations. Perhaps you can feel your digestion, motion of peristalsis transmuting your food and experiences. Maybe you can feel the beat of that powerful heart of yours in your fingertips or cheeks. And notice the breath. The inhale and exhale. Our constant companion. And let's just stay here with the breath, allowing our mind to become fascinated with the breath. 
Noticing everything we can about how the breath moves in and out of us. Noticing how slow or fast the breath is. Noticing how deep or shallow the breath is. Noticing where you tend to breathe to within yourself. Mm. Enjoying the yawns that happen. And we'll rest here being with our breath for a few more minutes. Go ahead and stay in Supta Baddha Konasana. Of course, always straightening out your legs or bringing your knees up if you need to to feel comfortable. I'm going to sit up and sing an invocation for us. So please stay nice and relaxed right where you are. I will be rejoining you to guide you out of it in a few moments. The rhythm she the river she the Yeah. 
Let's take a deep breath in. Sigh out the mouth. Squeezing that last little bit of goodness, a bit of peace that you feel right now. Let's press the legs out long. <laughs> My legs are going on camera. <laughs> there we go. Oh. Oh, there we go. Press the legs out long. Maybe pointing the toes, pressing the heels in, scooping the hips up. And reach the arms up overhead. Get long. Three little side to side rocking. Interlace the fingers and Press the palms away. Maybe drop both knees over to the right. Let the left arm reaches to the left. And then roll back through center. Let both knees go to the left. While the right arm goes to the right. <sighs> And then just roll on back, coming off the bolster. We're going to keep this handy and move it off to the side. And go ahead and open one of your blankets up and just place it over the bottom part of your mat. Just get a little extra padding for your knees. Although doing this at home, I have this nice rug, <laughs> which gives me some pretty nice padding for my knees anyway. We're going to come into all fours and do a little cat cow. So inhale, drop in the belly, looking up. Exhale, tuck the chin and arch the back. Back and forth with your breath. Just exploring your spinal movement front to back. Noticing any sticky spots or tightnesses. We'll come on back to neutral. Now we're going to do something similar but side to side. So breathe in, full breath. Exhale, left shoulder to left hip. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, right shoulder to right hip. And side to side, you go. 
Letting your own breath guide you. Just noticing your spinal motion side to side. And we want to finish up on the right as we started on the left. Go ahead and wrap that up. Coming back to a neutral spine, we're going to come into puppy dog stretch. So keep your booty over your knees. You can tuck your toes if you like. Sliding the hands forward, bringing the forehead, the chin, or if you're super open, your chest to the ground. Now this is a nice full back arch. So safe and comfortable with our four points of contact with the ground. So you melt that heart, melt those shoulders, letting that big, beautiful heart opening happen. Now, if you're just feeling it in your shoulders, not your spine at all, you can uh, bend your elbows to the sides and make it a little bit more about that back arch. I find that I can really melt into a nice arch, but it does take a minute to let all the layers of strength and resistance get along and let go. And then let's go ahead and gather your arms back underneath you. Coming back up to our tabletop, we're going to do our twists now. We'll be doing many twists, but this is the first. So go ahead and step your left hand forward, one hand's length, swooping that right arm into the space that you made, coming down in a little twist. You can put that left hand in front of your face, pressing into the mat and using that to turn your upper body to the left. Now, depending on how much you feel like doing today, you may want to lift that left arm up. You may want to reach it behind your back and tuck it behind your other hip. I get a nice stretch that way, but I find it much more comfortable to have that left hand in front of my face. I find I can just sort of open my heart up a little more that way. But then notice how your hips are trying to follow your upper body. They're going to the left. So just pull them over to the right an inch or two until you feel the weight even out on your knees. And that will give you a better, more effective twist. Let's take a deep breath here. As you exhale, ring it out. Another big breath in. And as you exhale, push yourself back up to tabletop. Time to do the other side. So step that right hand forward, one hand sleep. Swoop the left arm into the space that you made. Moving that right hand in front of the face. And if it feels good, you can always pick that right arm up. You may want to tuck it behind the hip. You may just like leaving it in front of the face so you can really support yourself. But do notice those hips, right? They're usually leaning a little over to the right now. And so pull them over to the left. Oh, which to me gives me the perfect back crack. I'm so glad I discovered this because I was never able to really do the twisting back crack. But this one, whoo, feels so nice. Really feel my, uh, my quarantine in it. <laughs> Come on, spy. Come on, keep breathing here. Full deep breaths. <sighs> Bring it out. And then we'll take another big breath in. 
And then press yourself on up. Back to our tabletop. But just for a moment, because now we're going to do some supported child's pose. So spread your knees nice and wide. Bring your booty down to your heels. Now there's a few variations here, depending on how your knees and ankles and hips are. We'll place our bolster or our bolster-like pile of towels in front of us. Placing the hands on the bolster. Inhale, really get long. And then exhale, walking the hands forward and laying your body down on the bolster. Arms come to either side, one cheek or the other comes to the bolster. Now, if you're having knee issues, take a blanket or a towel and slide it here between the calves and the thigh. Okay, that'll limit the movement of your knee and allow a more comfortable pose. Like with all of our poses, please do not endure something that hurts. Okay, if your ankles are tight, they don't want to lay down flat in this position, you can roll up a towel or blanket and just tuck that under the ankle so that the foot can be in its comfortable position, fully supported. The other thing, there's my other towel, here it is, is that sometimes that booty will be higher than the heart. Okay, if the pose for you is more like this, it's more like a heart melting pose, then you want to prop the bolster up so that your heart and hips are on the same level. So feel free to add one of those in. And you know, some people don't want a bolster at all. They really like their classical child's pose. So then just notice whatever cheek is down and I'll let you know at our halfway point. And so you can turn to the other cheek. But again, if your neck feels any sort of discomfort, go ahead and turn your head as many times as you need to. Or you can even make a little, little face cradle here so that you don't have to turn your neck to the side. You get a lot of little delicate muscles there. Then there's no point in suffering. You know, if, you're, if your neck needs one thing or the other to relax comfortably, Go ahead and give it that. And if you notice one side is more open than the other, it's often that way. And we ideally we'd like to stretch both sides and, and create, you know, the equal equality on both sides. But that's, you know, like many things in yoga, it's our goal. But you're not wrong if you don't get there. It's just what we work towards. The reason is functional movement. You know, a symmetrical body can move with ease to both sides. And asymmetricalness in the body leads to discomfort and uneven wear on joints and muscles and tendons. So I've heard it said that, you know, you want to work your weak side twice as much. It sounds like a little bit of overkill to me, but you know, when I've had a knee injury, it didn't seem like overkill at all. It helped me a lot to move through dis-ease and back into health. So just melt into your child's pose. Oh, if we were at the studio, I'd come around and I'd press your hips down and I'd Give you a little massage up and down your spine, maybe gently pressing your heart down and letting you melt. And of course, I would sing to you. So you enjoy your child's pose. We'll be here not as long as our souped up, but you know, we got another several minutes here. So you enjoy that. And uh, it is actually our halfway point. So go ahead and turn your cheek to the other side. Melting, relaxing, noticing that breath, letting it guide you once again deeper into yourself. 
deeper into relaxation. And I was saying, I wish I on yonder hill is there I'd sit and cry my fill and every tear would turn turn on me Deep breath in. 
Side out, squeezing the last bit of goodness out of your child's pose. Maybe push the bolster out of the way and just stretch into regular child's pose a little deeper without the bolster to support you. Another big breath in. Then exhale, gently finding your way back up. We're actually going to come to a seat on the bolster is fine. We're going to do some neck stretches, some shoulder stretches. So nice, comfortable seat on your bolster or a blanket folded up. You just want to make sure that you've got a natural curve in your lower back. If you sit there and you notice the pelvis is tilting, the back is rounding, then you want to lift those hips up. Have your strap handy. <clears throat> and then just notice which leg is on top or in front. First, we're going to take the strap, spread our arms nice and wide. Inhale as we lift up. And then exhale as we skin the cat and stretch the shoulders back. Always feel free to separate your hands a little more. This should not be very painful. It's a stretchy sensation, but no pain. We're going to inhale up again. Try to keep those arms straight, the strap taut. Exhale forward. Let's do that again. Shorten a little if you dare. Inhale up. Lifting the heart. Exhale back. Trying to keep those arms straight, but sometimes you gotta bend them. Once again, we'll inhale up. And exhale forward. Now taking that strap in your left hand, you're gonna bend your elbow and let that hand rest right behind the base of your neck. Your right arm, you're gonna flip the hand over, slide the top of the hand along your back until you find your strap. And then use that strap to gently work the hands towards each other. Maybe they can touch, maybe they can grasp, maybe none of the above. Feel your hands back there behind your heart and arch your spine over them like that nice little bit of pressure. You can just arch over, lifting that left elbow up, moving it back, lifting the heart up. Pressing into the sits bones, maybe even arch your back as you take a big breath in. In the next exhale, if you're feeling wild, come on forward and see if you can just touch that left elbow to the ground. And then come on up. Release your hands. And then roll it out. <laughs> now we're going to take that strap in our right hand. And as we did on the other side, lift it up, bend the elbow, let that hand rest at the base of your neck. Left hand, we're going to flip and slide the top of the hand along the back until we find that strap. And then we use the strap to see when we bring the hands closer to each other. I just barely touched on this side. That's a big victory for me. <laughs> so keep that right elbow pointing up, lifting the heart. Feeling the hands back there at the back of the heart and using that to arch the back. Oh my goodness, I can touch again. It's so exciting. Breathing here. And if it feels good and you're feeling feisty, lean forward and just kiss that right elbow to the ground coming up, releasing and rolling it out. All right, now we're gonna do eagle arms. So we want our left arm up top, right arm down beneath. We cross at the upper arm, bend the elbows, bring either the backs of the hands or the palms towards each other. So you're really in a pickle, it's quite a twist. <laughs> now pick the elbows up, move the hands away. Just really feel all those tendons stretch. Pull it in nice and tight. Give yourself a hug. 
And as you take a big breath in, spread those arms out. And exhale down. All right, now right arm goes on top, left arm on bottom. Cross them above the elbow, and then bend the elbows in either the backs of the hands or the palms. I can just get my fingertips onto my other palm, so I count that as a success. <laughs> And lift the elbows up, push the palms and the hands away. Feeling that nice stretch of all those tendons. And maybe hug it in tight. Oh, give yourself a hug. And then inhale, open them out. And exhale down. Now we're going to switch the cross of our legs. Okay, so whichever one is in front or on top, I'm just going to move it. Make any adjustments to your socks as are necessary. Now we're going to do some neck stretches. And the thing is, is that once the head goes to the side, the shoulder wants to come with it. You know, and there's this perverse instinct to just get as far as you can over. Um, but, you know, in order to get a good stretch, we have to fix the shoulders in position. So when I fix the shoulder in position and I drop the head, then these muscles can really stretch. So I'm holding them firm here, and the weight is coming to bear on them. Okay, but the moment I let that go and I lift it, you'll notice it becomes slack again, and the head has to go further to get the same amount of stretch. So as we go through these exercises, we're going to try and keep our shoulder girdle still, the collarbones open. So let's just rest our hands on our thighs, close the eyes, and feel those sits bones. And let's lean a little bit to the left. Feel it pour into the left sits bone. Lean a little bit to the right. Feel the weight pour into the right sits bone. Find that spot in the middle where you're even side to side. Then you're gonna lean a little forward, rock to the front of your sits bones. Lean a little back, rock to the back of your sits bones. Then find that spot in the middle where it's almost like you're floating. Lift the rib cage up and out of the waist. Lift the chin up and out of the neck. As if a golden string were attached to the top of your head, pulling you straight up. Letting your bones stack on top of each other. Creating a sense of weightlessness as no muscular energy is needed. And just the stacking works. I'm gonna reaffirm our shoulder girdle. Inhale. And drop the left ear to the left shoulder. Feeling the nice stretch. You don't have to go far for it to work nicely. And inhale up. Exhale, dropping the right ear to the right shoulder. Ooh, feels very different. If you want to reach up, do a little massage, that can be pretty nice. And inhale up. Drop the left ear to the left shoulder again. Once more, a little massage can really ease things here. This can expose parts of your neck that need a little love. Inhale up. And drop the right ear to the right shoulder. Again, reaffirming your shoulders down. Been teaching for so long, am I still, my shoulder's still like, I'm going with you. <laughs> no, you're not. Hold down the fourth shoulder. You can do it. Inhale up. Once again, the left ear to the left shoulder. This time we're going to rotate our gaze up to where the ceiling meets the wall. Feel the front right neck stretch. Then put the chin down, looking towards in the front of your, in the front of your little folded legs. Feel the back right neck stretch. Maybe kind of roll between them. And then inhale up. Now drop the right ear to the right shoulder. Once again, rotate up. Feel the front left part of the neck stretch. Then rotate down. Feel the back left neck stretch. Maybe go back and forth gently. And feel that borderline where your neck is just not having it. And inhale up. 
Now we're going to exhale, put the chin over the right shoulder. Keeping the shoulder girdle steady, just turning the neck as much as we can. Helps to pull the ears back a little sometimes. Inhale forward. Exhale, put the chin over the left shoulder. Inhale forward. Exhale with the chin over the right shoulder again. Place your hand on your jaw, not to push, more to hold space. So right, you can turn that last little bit and you feel that it's happening. You can really witness yourself here. Release, inhale forward. And we're gonna exhale, chin over the left shoulder. Again, you can place your hand here just to support yourself. And then maybe turn that last little bit. Release, and inhale forward. A little shoulder roll here, a couple shoulder rolls back, a couple shoulder rolls forward. I like a little kind of side to side. <laughs> and now we're going to stretch our neck. Back and forth. <laughs> we have been stretching our neck. I was paying attention. So when we drop our head back, you just want to keep in mind that we're going to come out of it by walking the hands forward, changing our center of gravity, and then the head will just come forward. Sometimes there's a tendency to just muscle the head up. Not that I think you would do that, but some people do, and you can injure yourself, and I, I would hate that, so I always give this little blur. So just be aware, and I'll prompt you when the time comes. So once again, set up nice and straight. Now we're gonna push that chin back, like you wanna make your double chin, and then rotate the top of the head forward, keeping the heart lifted, and just stretching the back of the neck on both sides. Breathing here. Seeing if there's anything else you can relax. Maybe gently leaning side to side. Just feeling how that changes the stretch. For me, it always opens up a little more space and then I can drop the head a little further. Inhale up. Now we're gonna go back. So we're gonna jut the chin out funky chicken style. And then lift the chin up as if you could lay the scalp down onto the nape of your neck. Now if it feels good, you can move your hands back here, the back of your bolster, really arch, lifting the heart. Look behind you like an owl. <laughs> and then walk your hands forward. And you'll just feel it when your head just goes. All right. Now I'm gonna move this bolster out of the way a little much for the hip stretches and leg stretches we're going to do now. But I can't do it with just nothing, okay? So I'm going to fold a blanket up to go under my hips. I need about a third the lift that I get from a bolster for this. Now if you are really tight in this, a bolster may help. Okay. First thing we're going to do is put both of our legs out in front of us. Sit up nice and tall, lifting the heart. And this is already probably a pretty good hamstring stretch. Those hamstrings, we don't want to stretch them too intensely right now. We're just kind of letting the legs know it's their turn. I like to do a little massage on the thighs, the IT band. Go ahead and slide your hands forward, dropping your chin down and Stretching the whole back of your body. Hopefully feeling it in your lower back, your hamstrings. You can touch your toes great, but it's definitely not necessary as long as you're feeling the stretch. And just notice about how far you go. Because we're just starting out with the leg stretching. Now we're gonna do that left knee and bring that outer, the, the sole of the foot, into about midpoint of the thigh. Here we don't want it pressed against the thigh very hard. Big breath in and then exhale, square yourself off over that extended leg. Now it's really nice to have a block and a bolster for this. Let me grab my blocks.
Okay. Left leg bent, squared over that leg. We're going to just walk the hands forward. And even if you don't come very far, you, you know, you'll feel that just that left leg stretching. Make it feel nice to take this left hand, press it into that bent left leg. Sometimes you can kind of push off of it, sort of twist a little bit. Maybe lean towards it a little bit. There you go. Catch a block. Then we're going to take our block and put it on the leg. I like it up high. If you're really tight, you may need two blocks on your upper leg. Don't put them on your knee. You may be able to do two blocks here right under my knee. I think I can probably do just one. And hopefully you can find a little place of repose here. You can relax your head, relax your neck. And start feeling as your body gently melts, feeling supported and, and easing into a deeper pose. Now it can feel really nice to reach back with your hand and do some like kind of tapping where the hips meet the, the back. I mean, I like to flap it fairly hard. It does kind of just, I don't know, like jolt back into relaxing a little bit. You can also just place your hand back there and feel for the warmth of your hand. Let's inhale, coming on up. Now we're going to bring this left knee up. Hold both hands on it, sitting up nice and tall. And then we're going to do our little twist. Now, <laughs> you may want to rotate towards your knee, okay? Placing that left hand behind your hip and rotating. I am 16 weeks pregnant today. That is counterindicated for me. So I'm going to twist the other way. Then I'm going to place my right hand behind my hip and do more of an opening. Boy, there's way more room for my belly this way. <laughs> now I don't get the fun of threading my arm on the outside of my knee, <laughs> but it's still good. <laughs> Count myself blessed. And inhale forward. Extend that left leg and release a little shake. Now we're going to bend that right leg up, bringing the sole of the foot to about the mid thigh. Big breath in. Exhale, square yourself off over that extended left leg. And without really stretching, we're going to just kind of hang out here for a minute. What I notice as I relax into this pose, it's like muscles in my hips and low back relax. And it sort of feels like I'm turning or sliding. And, uh, you know, I think what this does is it challenges muscles in our core that we hold taut most of the time. And then in this pose, they really have to let go so we can do it. And then as I realize where they are and let them go, I can go down farther over the leg, but it's almost like my hips are turning underneath me. So there's this kind of turning sensation. And once I let that turning happen, then I relax into it. My back stretches, my hamstring stretches. You can place your block as you slowly slip forward, finding a spot where you can release your head. And then once that head is relaxing, it's almost like it gives permission for deeper layers of muscles to let go. And here's where it can feel really nice. I do both sides to kind of reach back and kind of 
whack my muscles on either side of my spine, and especially right in that little nexus where the pelvis meets the, the back. You need it along the top of the hip, and then on the other side, not opened up, it's not stretched out as much for a really nice relief, but it still just feels good. And then that always seems to, you know, jostle things so that I can take it a little deeper. And let me just see, what else can we let go of? What else can we surrender? Let's take a big breath in. Exhale, coming on up. We're gonna go ahead and lift that bent right leg for our twist. First, just put your knees on it. Find the tops of the sit bones. Sit nice and tall. Inhale, get tall. And exhale, you're gonna put your right hand behind your right hip and rotate towards your knee. Unless you're pregnant, like me, then you're gonna put your left hand behind your left hip and make that bent knee really strong so I can use it as kind of a wedge to, oh, that feels great. Breathing into your twist. And then inhale to unwind. I'm gonna release that right knee straight. And now once again, we're gonna fold over the legs. And this time it should be a very different experience because we've stretched the hips. So let's make a pile of bolsters and blocks on our legs. If you'd like to take a strap around your feet, sometimes it's deeply comforting to just be able to hang on to something. First, just sit up onto those sit bones. And then we're gonna try and hinge at the hips, coming forward in a way where the back doesn't round. Okay, so we're like opening the heart, pulling the heart forward, and I'll tell you what, I already feel it. <laughs> like, without rolling forward, you just, you, it's amazing if you can be at 90 degrees, which is maybe like right where I'm at after a lot of work. But this isn't the whole part of our forward fold, is it? We're gonna also go ahead and roll. So let's just roll down one vertebra at a time, starting with our chin and gently dropping the chin as we curl our neck like a fancy pony. You can curl it down and you'll already notice that you get a little bit more play with being able to slide forward as you curl forward. Curl down and forward until you reach a point where you're like, well, that's about how far I can go. And then Get that block underneath your head and find that repose. Hopefully your head is far enough up that what you feel is a pleasant stretch, not a punishing or super uncomfortable stretch, but just more like a little safe forward fold. As your back and back of the legs open up, you can slide your Support system down your legs. If you can reach them, this is a kind of nice time to give your feet a little massage. You can also take your hands and rub on the outside of your legs. It feels really pretty nice to massage the outer thighs here. Maybe get your hands underneath and just give the hamstring, you'll feel them taut underneath you, you know, just gently press into the hamstring with all the finger pads, and that'll gently stretch them and allow you to go a little deeper. Let's see, is there anything else you can let go of? Anything else you can surrender? Okay, come on up. Keep all those blocks handy now. We're gonna, we're gonna open the legs up into a straddle. Doesn't need to be super wide for our purposes. You know, you want a comfortable straddle that you can be in that's not punishing. 
I'm gonna lift both arms up and take a nice big breath in. Through the left leg, hand is gonna trail down the left leg. Keep both sit bones attached to the ground. So come over as far as you can with those both sit bones. You know, if I go a little further, I gotta lift my sit bone up to do it. You may wanna release that hand down. I like to hold on to the foot with the same side hand. You may wanna lift up. Oh, Kind of like a triangle pose without having to hold yourself up. And then release the head, release the neck. Inhale up. Oh, my sit bone came up, I cheated. That was me, I'm sorry about that. Again, we lift those arms. And this time that right arm is gonna slide along that right leg. See how far you can come without Letting the sit bone come up. I really have to keep like a fair amount of weight pushing back into the sit bone to let it come up. We lift the arm straight up, move a little bit more weight back there. Then I can go a little deeper in. We can touch that opposite leg. I know this is kind of better for me right now. And then come on up, big breath in. And then we're going to walk ourselves forward. Now, make sure you're not holding a lot of stress in the ankles. Sometimes people unconsciously try to resist the forward motion by keeping their feet straight. Uh, that actually worked. So I got my bolster straight out from my hips. I'm going to put my hands on it. Press into it with my hands and inhale, really lengthening the spine. Pressing the legs into the mat as I yearn upward. And then walk the hands forward, laying the belly down. Now, you may need to prop your bolster up, the block, so that it'll meet you. You may prefer to put a block on top for your head. You find the version that gives you the support that makes this a pleasant stretch. You know, I feel it in my thighs, and it's pretty nice. It should not be something that you can't endure. And then we're gonna just lay the face down. You can always go one cheek or the other. Reaching the arms out. And bringing the weight forward. Maybe you can reach out uh, with your hands and this is another good time to do a little bit of massage. Especially on this inner thigh, I find that like pressing down Really, you can do the backs of the leg too, and really, really access muscles that have a lot to do with your posture, but don't get a lot of love or attention. And then just let everything go. Just see what else you can melt. Bring your hands into the center. Take a big breath in. And exhale, gently pushing the floor away. Now we're going to fold the left leg in. What am I doing here? I feel like I sort of did that already. I don't have a. Yeah, I think we did it. We did what I want to do. All right, we're going to transition onto our backs now. Do a few more hip stretches, laying down. And we are winding into the last few stretches here. So anything you'd like to have for your Shavasana, you know, get it handy now. And I'm going to straighten this out because it looks so nice with my books. <laughs> All right, so find your way on your back. First, let's just pull the knees into the chest. Inhale, move the knees away. Exhale, squeeze them in. And keep doing that. Opening the knees out to the side. And then all the way out to the side. Let's pick our feet up. Grasp the outer edges of our feet and just have a little happy baby. 
Now you can just rest here, holding onto the legs, letting the weight of the arms stretch you. Or if you'd like a little more sensation, press that lower back into the ground. Usually the hips kind of curl up a little bit. You can also pull the knees in towards the armpit a little more. And then just check in with your feet. Make sure they're not sickled out to the side. Sometimes the four corners of the feet aren't even with the ceiling. You will have one side that's lowering. And you can bring your hips into more congruence by just keeping those feet in congruence. Release the feet, extend the legs and the arms nice and long. Now we're gonna bend our knees. And let's cross the right ankle over the left knee. Pick up the left leg, interlace the fingers behind that thigh. And if you wanna just hang out here, that's fine. If you're already feeling a good stretch, it's great. If you'd like a little more, you may interlace the fingers on the outside of the shin. You may flex the foot, the uh, upper foot. And then tune in with your hips. Sometimes the sides of the waist will adjust to try and make it easier. Usually that left hip will come up. So maybe press the left hip down, evening out the sides of the waist. And when I do that, I feel like an immediate shift in the, the stretch. It goes right to the, <laughs> to the uh, muscle, that one muscle. <laughs> I, I can't remember the name, but it still didn't make your back feel really good. <laughs> okay, let's release. Extend nice and long. <sighs> Bend those legs again. And this time we're going to cross the left knee over, or the left ankle over the right knee. Picking that right leg up and interlacing behind the thigh. Or maybe interlace behind the shin. And then just see how you feel, right? Maybe you want to flex that left foot. See how your sides of your waist are doing. <laughs> oh, I'm feeling it already. But you might want to press that right hip down a little bit. Even out the sides of the waist and feel piriformis. There it is. Feel your piriformis stretching. It's, it's attached deep in the kind of left butt cheek and it connects basically the thigh bone to the back and uh, you can really feel it in there and boy is it happier when you stretch it all right release in the legs and arms now we're going to bend our knees again and place both of our feet on the outer edges of the mat Take a big breath in here. Exhale, drop the knees over to the right. Oh. And if you'd like a little more, you can pick up your right ankle, put it on your left knee, guiding that into the mat. Left arm reaches out to the left. Knees are going down. Pull the belly button into the spine and feel a really delicious stretch in the psoas, on the front left psoas. I'm lifting my left arm up to the corner of my mat, and I get a stretch here. Nothing else stretches. Quite as good. Go ahead and release your ankle off your knee. Inhale, both knees up. Exhale, both knees over to the left. Again, you can just rest here. It's very close to Shavasana. You may be just completely done. But if you would like a little more sensation, pick up that left ankle, put it on the right knee, guiding it into the ground. Reach that right arm up into the right corner of the mat. Pull the belly button into the spine and feel that front right psoas. And it's just, I do like to massage it a little bit. It's really good for your digestion too, to, Feel a little spaciousness here in the tummy. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna come back up. And end with a little twist. So my knees are up, 
I'm gonna move my hips over to the right, drop my knees to the left, reaching my right arm out to the right, maybe picking up the rib cage and adjusting it so that I can twist a little deeper. Mm -hmm. Now your knees can be on top of each other here. If you've got really painful hips, you may wanna block between your knees. Or you may want to lift that right leg up and put it kind of above your left knee, which is deeper and feels pretty good to me. Ooh, and I popped. Um, but it depends on your back and how you feel. I'm kind of, I'm kind of like twisting over a little yoga ball, a little tiny yoga ball. Like, I really feel the baby when I do this. <laughs> and inhale, coming on up. Move those hips back to the middle. Let's scoot them over to the left, dropping the knees to the right. This may be your twist, or if you like to readjust your ribs so that they're pointing upward. Maybe you want to move that left knee on top of or above the right knee. Reaching to the left. No pop on this side, so sad. And let's roll onto the back again. Centering the hips. It's time for Shavasana. So you may just want to lay out, arms and legs spread, taking up as much room as you like. You may be a little more comfortable with the bolster under your thighs. You may want to put your legs up a wall. That's a great choice. Or you may even want to come back to Supta Baddha Konasana that we started with. I can't get enough of that pose. It's so wonderful. So just choose your pose. Get cozy under a blanket. Take a big breath. Sigh it out. Let's do another one like that, full breath in, filling all the way up. Sigh it out. We'll do one more big breath like that, filling all the way up. Then let it go. Surrendering and melting. Letting every muscle go. Thinking back to our yoga nidra practice at the beginning. Maybe checking in with those trouble spots. Maybe your neck. Maybe your shoulders. Maybe your hips. Maybe your tummy. Whatever it is. Give it the encouragement it needs to grow heavy into your mat. Heavy into the bolster. Heavy into your pillow. Let every muscle go slack. Feeling as your bones seem to grow heavier. The muscles that hold them up off the floor surrender and release. Feel your tendons and ligaments soften, slacken. Feeling your skin grow soft. Feel your heart soften. Feel your willpower abate. Feel your mind slowing and simplifying until it's like you fall asleep because you just float away. Letting everything melt. Imagine when I come around to some delicious lavender oil. Can you hear me open the container, drip a bit into my hands and replace the cap? Hear me rub my hands together and cup it over your face, breathing in the scent deeply. <sighs> Ah, 
Feel my hands pressing your shoulders down, squeezing the last little bit of tension out of them. Feeling my cool fingers on your forehead. So gently pull your skin away from the brow. Feel as I lift your head away from your collarbones, gently lengthening the neck and settling you into a more comfortable position. And here as I gently find my seat. Stay here, floating in your shavasana for a few more minutes. chest for one final squeeze before rolling to your side and resting in fetal position. Here on the edge of the void, you stand between two worlds. Perhaps there's something you'd like to leave in the underworld, something you're ready to put away, something that no longer serves you. You may let it go now. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, gently push yourself up, finding a comfortable seat. <clears throat> We'll close with one sound of Aum. Um, I don't know if it's worth saying that even if I can't hear you, I'll be able to feel your Aum. Um. If you feel shy or you still want to make a sound, you can Aum along in, our, in your mind and we'll feel your energy merge with us. So let's take a cleansing breath in. Side out and breathe in for our own. Oh. The divine in me bows to the divine in you. Namaste. Thank you so much. Unmute yourself so we can say hi. I'll edit this part out later, don't worry.
It's a good thing I muted because the cat was in here meowing the whole time. Did you see him? I would have loved that. <laughs> I don't think I know. <laughs> having a kitty so bad. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you can have one of ours. I think we have too many. <laughs> Is there such a thing? <laughs> No. Oh, you know, I have two. You have two. We have five. I have two elderly dogs. Oh, oh. All right. So, um, as much as I want a puppy or a kitty, I need to wait until no, yeah, the dogs are in my home because I my dogs are grumpy and old and hard to deal with. So, and they need medicine all the time. And, oh, yeah. We went through that with an old cat who just yeah, went, yeah. It's sad, but what do you do? You just, give them the best life you can. Right. The best you can. Yeah. How lucky they are to have great medical care. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it. But I want to know. Congratulations to you. My goodness. You're pregnant. Thank you. That's so exciting. Thank you. Is this yes. Your first child? Uh, it's my second. It's second. My second. Okay, that's what I thought. How lovely. I know. I have a little girl and I'll have a little boy. I get a matched set. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. And how far along did you say you were? I kind of missed that. Yesterday. Oh, okay. Right. Oh. Just, just hit the, the easy part. The second trimester is really nice and mellow. Well, neat. It's, it's already been so much easier than with my daughter. Real? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I've just had like a tenth the amount of nausea, uh, a tenth the amount of exhaustion. I had gestational diabetes the first time, and I was tired all the time. Oh, and maybe because I'm chasing a toddler this time, I'm just, I don't know, I'm eating healthy, <laughs> feeling good. Good, good. All right, well, you stay safe. You too. Thanks so much for joining me. I really enjoy human contact. Thank you. Yes, this is a lovely <laughs> class. Thank you. You have a wonderful time and I'll post it. You can take it as many times as you want. Excellent. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.